If you want to just first say your your name and. All right. My name is Michael Jones. My DLC number is one six seven zero seven four. Um. So, Michael, tell me a little bit about. I know you're getting ready to be released, but you've been here for a while. Can you tell I've me a little? I've been here since July. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I've been here since July. Um. I'm an ex-white supremacist. That's why I'm on this unit. It's a gang unit. Um, to be honest, my people are after me right now because I quit. So it's kind of crazy, but I'm just trying to change my life. I'm just trying to get up out of here. You know, I, I keep wondering about that. I've talked to a lot of kids who've been in gangs, and oh. it's harder to quit than it is to get in. Tell me, how, how do you actually quit? I just told them, I was like, look, if y'all got, I'm done. If y'all got a problem with it, walk in the bathroom and we'll settle it. And they didn't say nothing to me. They just let it ride. But talking about jumping me and stuff, I ain't worried about that. So how did you become a white supremacist to begin with? I was born into a white supremacist. Because my family is mixed up in it. But just, I don't hate people, man. I'm, that's why I quit. I'm just, I don't hate everybody. So tell me what it was like growing up in that environment. It was kind of crazy. I mean... Seen a lot of stuff. I've been to rallies. I mean, all that stuff. I've seen 40 foot crosses burn and stuff like that. But I just don't see a point in it. So when you're little and you're seeing that, you really don't know any better when exactly, you're little. Exactly, yeah. Right? So you mm -hmm. just thought it was normal? Yeah, just That's what we lived by. It's just how we was. We didn't, I didn't know anything different from it. Just that's how stuff was. Do you have contact with your family now? Yeah, I still have contact with my family. So tell me about your family. How do you feel about it now? Well, like my mom is the only one that's still alive and stuff. They ain't, they ain't mixed up in it. It was my dad and them that was a white supremacist. But, I mean, I still associate with my dad's people. I don't have a problem. I just don't have the same beliefs as them. So when you get out, how hard do you think it's going to be? Are you going back home? or where I'm going you? back to my mother's, yeah. I'm going back home. How hard is it going to be to see your old friends and tell me how you feel about that? It ain't going to be easy, but like, I'm just going to have to, you know what I'm saying? Just be polite as I can, but I can't, can't run with them like I used to. I can't do all the same stuff I used to do. Can't do it. So when did you get your tattoos? Oh, I've had most of these since I was young. I just, like, I did them myself, most of them, but I just haven't had them for years. How, how do you do them yourself? Mm, homemade tattoo guns. I did a couple of them in here, I ain't gonna lie. With like pencils and stuff like that. I stored on that jailbird right there in here. With a pencil just going like that. I got my, my SS right here. But, just. So, what's it been like being locked up? It's a struggle, I mean, I don't, I don't like being here, so that's why I'm trying to get out and stuff, I mean. I, been jumped, I've been beat down, I've had my food taken. It's a dangerous place, man. I got to, yeah, this ain't a cool place to be. We've talked to a lot of kids who've gone through the GROW program, and it mm -hmm. really seems to help. Tell me about the, the GROW program and how you felt about it's that. Just, you know what I'm saying? It teaches you ups and downs, everything. It teaches you, you know what I'm saying, skills that you need in life. Just if you use them, if you take them and you use them, then it's going to help you. I mean, it helped me. It taught me. You know what I'm saying? And not the one being gangs and stuff. It, you know what I'm saying? It helped me get my GED and everything. So you got your GED? Yeah, I got my GED in here. So I mean, if you use this program, it'll help you. That's all there is to it. But most people don't. So what would you do if when you got out, you know, some little kid, say some 10, 11 year old kid came up and said, hey, Michael, you know, I want to. I'm going to join a gang. I think that'd be cool. I try to explain to him why I shouldn't do that. Because I've done lived through, you know what I'm saying? I've done seen the ups and downs of all of it. And just try to stop his decision. Or at least help him make a better one. What gang were you affiliated with? White, it was the Aryan Nation. The Aryan Nation. Yeah. So how have you gotten along with some of the other kids in here who have been in rival gang members? I just... Call the truce at the door. I was like, look, I ain't gonna say that to you. You ain't gonna say that to me. You know what I'm saying? Because we're both just trying to get out of here. But most of them didn't listen. I've been beat down. I had my face swell up by like this. I was pissing out blood one time. 
they had me down in segregation for 22 days because the kids was having I had cash on my head. And, I mean, I've been through a lot through it. So what were some of the things you did that brought you to Pendleton? Pendleton? How'd you get locked I was, up? I was hustling, I was breaking into houses, I was beating people up. I got into it with my mom and them, and that's what really got me busted, but they was watching me anyway, they knew. Because like, we was growing weed, we was selling weed, we was toting guns, we was doing a little bit of everything. But, Were you scared at the time yeah. to get caught? I wasn't thinking about getting caught, I was thinking about making the money and doing what I wanted to do. I didn't care if I got caught, I wasn't worried about that. Really? Because I think most people think, man, if I was doing all that, I'd be scared. Any, any day I'd get caught, I'd get locked up. And the thought of being locked up would just scare the hell out of people. It didn't go through your mind. Not until I got here, it didn't. Then it got me. But when I was doing it, I wasn't thinking about nothing but doing it. I've had a lot of kids say, you know, when they come in, they act tough. Mm -hmm. because they don't want you got to. Admit. You got to put on a front when you first get here because if they see any sign of weakness, they got you. They got your food, they got your commissary, they got whatever they want. And if you don't hand over, they're going to take it. And if you don't get up and fight for it, you're going to lose it anyway. So do you ever think about now that you're 18 and you're getting out, mm -hmm. that once you get out, if you mess up now... Yeah, I'm across the street. I'm, but I ain't, I'm not trying to mess up this time. I got to do good. Because I can't, I can't afford it. I can't do it. So what do you want to do once you get out? What are, mm -hmm. what are your plans? Just get a job and just live a regular life, you know what I'm saying? Just, just the only thing I can do. It's either that or go back to jail, get locked back up. Now I ain't trying to do that, so I'm just going to use the skills I got in here, use my GED and stuff, and just move on. Time to grow up and be a man. That's, that's all I can do. So it seems like almost every kid I've talked to over the past... 10, 11 years, usually at the beginning, it's all about money. Either, you know, the, the ultimate goal is I wanna, I wanna get money, whether it's to live or to eat or just because they want things. Is that how it kind of started for you? Yeah, I mean, like, like, you know, like you were saying, most of these kids come from broken homes, you know what I'm saying? Low families, they ain't got no money and stuff. That's the only way they figure they can do it. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't all the, they ain't used to being around all that kind of stuff. So, that's yeah, that's how it started for me. Just broke home, didn't have no money, didn't have nothing like that. So, I, I had to get it somehow. So. Well, what do you think would help kids before they went to a life of crime? Is it just that there's, people aren't paying attention? People aren't? Yeah, people ain't listening. They ain't getting attention. I mean, the only attention they get is from the streets. You know what I'm saying? The people who teach them how to sell dope, teach them how to do that stuff. And they're just setting them up for failure. What about, I mean, like, mentoring? Would that help? After school programs? What What would help? Because you, you got a lot of adults saying, oh, we should do this, we should do that. But what's the answer? If kids could come up with the answer of how to keep them off the streets, how to keep them away from joining gangs, selling drugs, is there any good answer? I ain't never really thought about that. Like, I see, I can see how mentoring and stuff could help, but you just, I'm not really sure how to answer that question for real because I've never been through nothing like it. I mean, that's all I ever knew was the street. Never had no mentor program or nothing like that, so I don't really know. So what's your family think about you coming home? Well, oh, they're ready for me to come home, you know what I'm saying? They want me to come home, but, you yeah. know, they just, they hope I do good this time. They hope I don't mess up again. That's about it. So what is it you'd want people out there to know about you or any of the other kids in here that they might have misperceptions about or they think, ah, oh, the kids behind those bars are all rotten kids? That ain't all bad. We ain't all bad. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us is trying to change our lives and stuff, you know? But a lot of us ain't. You just, you got to pick the ones that are and pick the ones that ain't. Not everybody's bad. I figured that out from being up in here. Because I used to hate everybody if they wasn't white, man, but... That's really not how it is, man. You gotta judge people by perception, man. You can't just look at them and say, well, that, you know, that kind of person is this, or that dude's locked up, so he, you know what I'm saying? He's a bad dude. You just, people mess up. You just gotta give them a shot. 
Were there other kids here that were white supremacists? There were several. In fact, five of them are in segregation right now for trying to start a revol or some kind of a revolution, bringing something up. They all shaved their heads and put symbols all over their arms and stuff, but I ain't mixed up in it. So you didn't get caught up in that? I ain't messing with them dudes. Do they try and get you to yeah. come back? Yeah. That takes a lot of inner strength not to do it. Just gotta want you just I don't want to do it, so I'm not gonna do it. Just like you know what I'm saying? Just like anything else. If I don't want to listen to these staff, I'm not gonna do it. But I choose to because it's the only way I'm gonna get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Are you scared at all to be released? I'm ready to get released. I got it this time. I know I do. So how long have you been in here? I've been in the Department of Corrections for a year, but I've only been at this facility since July twenty fourth. Because I came from another facility, I got reclassed. So having racial problems with peers. This might sound like a stupid question, but have you made any friends in here? Friends? I've made several acquaintances, but I don't plan to meet up with none of these people. So no, nah, I ain't made no friends. I mean, I'm cool with people, but that's just to keep the peace so I can get up out of here. I ain't made no friends in here. One kid told me one time, you come in here by yourself, you leave by yourself. Okay, you don't leave with these people, man. If you choose to meet up, then you're stupid. Because these people are, they ain't worth messing with, because they're all locked up too, and half of them's gonna get locked up again. That's true, you come in here by yourself, you leave by yourself. That's the only way you can do it. That's just the way it is. Did you, did you at any time, or have any of the kids in here ever talked about you know, yeah, I'm going to end up in adult prison. Several. Several. At one time, I even said that, you know, I didn't think I was ever going to make it through this. I never thought I was going to get this far. But I just decided I had enough. What made you change? I'm just tired. I'm tired of being in here. I'm just, I'm ready to grow up and be a man. Stop doing this. Acting. This is little kid stuff, man. Wanting to be staying here, having to be told when to do stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm just tired of it. I'm ready to go do what I want to do, so it's the only way I can do it. So if you had any final things to say about who you were when you first came in here and who you are now, what would you want to say? Flip, I'm completely different. I was hateful, I was, I was just, I was pretty much a bad person when I first got in the Department of Corrections, but changed it now, I'm done. So, that's about it. Well, sounds like you've had a long, long road. Yeah. So then you'll go, what, in two weeks? No, I go to Release Art this Tuesday in five days, and um, I should leave on the 24th of this You're actually month. You're going to leave on the 17th? Huh. Better, I'm, I guess. That was a surprise. No. <laughs> typically, wow. typically, they leave two weeks after, after they go through ARC, but we've already started the process on, on him. So. so, will your mom come pick you up? Is that the yeah, plan? Yeah, my mom has to come pick me up. She has, she's my guardian. She has to sign for me. Yeah. So. so, what's that going to feel like walking out? No, no bar? that's what's up. I'm ready. That's what's up. <laughs> I got to do it. So tell me how you think you're going to feel when you walk out. I don't out. know. It's going to be weird, but I don't even know because I, I ain't never been released from a silly after this long like this. So I don't I don't know. It's going to be weird. It's going to be hard, but I got to do it. No jumpsuit. I'm ready to get rid of this jumpsuit. I hate these jumpsuits. No. No, I don't Handcuffs, like Handcuffs, no razor wire. That's what's up. <laughs> that makes me smile. Yeah. But does it is it gonna feel kind of weird just to be able to drive off in a car and? Oh yeah, I haven't left this facility since I got here. I haven't seen past those woods. I ain't seen past up front. It just it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be different. What's the first thing you want to do when you get out? I don't even know. Just spend your time with my family. Just hug my mom. That's it. About all I can do. Eat good food. I ain't really worried about the food right now. I'll, I'll get the food later.
thanks for agreeing to come. It really helps. It helps for people here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys. Yeah. Just a... Wow. I got 30 more. Do what? I got 30 more of them. What's the jailbird right there? The jailbird, yeah, I ain't finished it yet. I'm going to, but I ain't done it yet. I got the swastikas. I got the SS bolts. Did you do those yourself? Yeah. I did the bolts in here. Right over in cell 20. Doesn't that hurt? A little bit. This is a cross. Oh, this. It's like I ain't it ain't done yet. It needs to be filled in and stuff. You really can't see it. There's a skull right there and it's got a bone. But I got I still gotta fill in the skull and stuff. And then this is supposed to be red right around here. And I got this right here is where I started filling that in. Are you gonna keep all those tattoos? Mm -hmm. I'd like to get some of them removed, but I ain't gonna be here long enough to be in there because they got a program they're gonna start here okay. where they're gonna remove tattoos for free, but I ain't gonna be here long enough so I'm right, just gonna have to wear some sleeves, I guess. Wear some long sleeves. Yeah. Like. So how do you feel about them now that you, you know? I kind of wish I wouldn't have got all of them. I like a couple of them, but I, I went overboard with it. So what do you do about the swastikas? I'm gonna cover them up. I'm gonna get bigger tattoos over them. That's all I can do with them. Do you remember when you got your first tattoo? My first tattoo. You can't even see my first tattoo. It was just back behind that right there. It was my initials, but it was crooked. So we filled that in over top of it so you couldn't see it. I was old? like 12. I think I was 12. So does your family know you are no you no longer agree with the white supremacy? Yeah. They're just okay. going to have to get over it, I guess. And they, 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 they ain't nothing else they can do about it. It's not a so. If they don't like it, they don't have to associate with me. It's on them. Do you, um, so you don't harbor any hard feelings toward them for raising you that way? It's the way they think is right. I mean, that's just what they think. Were they raised that way? I suppose. I, don't know. I guess. You kind of have to be raised that way unless somebody gives you a reason to hate them. So. So how do you think you'll raise your kids someday if you have kids? I ain't going to raise them like Adam's. Teach them respect, teach them values, you know, teach them parts of the things I used here. Because, you know what I'm saying, that's the only thing you can. That's the only way to keep them from ending up in these type of situations. Ending up dead or in jail or in gangs, mixed up in drugs and stuff. So you just got to teach them the right way to do things. So in a weird way, something good came out of you being locked up. Several good things came from me being locked up. You know what I'm saying? I figured out that, you know, I got to interact with different racial groups, different people. With, it helped me out, you know what I'm saying? Because in life, you can't hate it, you know. There's, it's too mixed up now. The world's too mixed up. This ain't, this ain't the 60s and 50s. Can't be segregated no more. You know what I'm saying? I got my GD. That's, that's a big deal. I never thought I was going to get my GD. Never. So you got your GD so, in prison? I got the, yeah. I can go to college for free because I got that GD in prison. Because the state will pay for me four years. You going to do it? I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. That'd be a huge step. Yeah, that'd be crazy. People wouldn't know what to think. Go from being a white supremacist to a yeah. college student? It's a pretty big jump. I don't know. But it's possible. Oh, it's possible. I can do it. But I ain't sure yet. I might just go straight to work. <laughs>